All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is November 19th, 2021. We are counting down the days like what a week and a half, less than a week and a half now. Man, <laughs> it's exciting. And if you think that's exciting, which it is hugely exciting, <laughs> brothers and sisters. <laughs> What I'm going to share with you today, you see this building, it's been going on for the last three videos. I've been saying since this video back here that, that I'm going to get into the kids and, and talk about these other things again as a refresher for all those people that, that haven't understood it and, and didn't see the older videos. But I also said <laughs> that God willing, right? Just how the spirit is leading me. And as this whole thing of Genesis has continued, Oh, my word. It's going to freak you out. I've said from the beginning that the key or keys that we've been given, the first key is the revelation of the open book of the Gospels, right? The first key this ministry was given it was revealed to us in this video right here. Okay, the intro to the end time gospels revealed what that did. That was the very first thing this ministry ever was uh, ever received. And it was the revelation of who Luke, Mark and Matthew, which you could see like this, Luke, Mark and Matthew. Or you can say Luke, Mark and Matthew. were speaking about. OK, or we're speaking to and you guys know this very well. All right. Only people that are new don't have a clue of what I'm saying here. But if you don't have a clue about what I'm saying here, it is mandatory that you come and listen to these first two keys. These unlocked the book. Never heard me say that before, did you? The book. Not just the open books that we've been talking about forever. Right? The open books that have been revealed, we've been given the keys to open the book. Let that sink into, into, your, into your thoughts for a moment as you understand what I'm saying. Because what you're going to see is a level of depth of why we're told and why we understand the beginning is revealed in the end and the end is revealed in the beginning. It is so heavy. It is so deep. It is so revealing and so proving of this time to come that it's going to blow you away. And <laughs> so for anybody that's new, begin with this intro. You're going to understand once and for all these differences that are spoken about in the Gospels. We have the key. It's been open to us to understand why there's these differences. And the difference reveals the end of days, who the Gospels are speaking to. And the Gospel of Luke is the revelation is speaking to the pre-trib bride of Christ or sons of God, which is the same thing. The Mark group, is the sleeping church that's left behind or and or the house of Israel because they're grafted in. And Matthew is to Judah or the house of Judah. So the, the, the bride of Christ, the sons of God. Then Mark is to the house of Israel, the sleeping church, right? Those Gentiles grafted in. And Matthew is to the Jews, to the house of Judah. That is the beginning of all this understanding. That is the revelation of what we see here, why we see Luke, Mark, and Matthew. This revelation is what then gave us the understanding that the end of days is not one set of seven years, but is two sets of seven years. That there's a seven years of seals for the Mark group, this portion that, yes, they believe in Christ, but they're not ready. They're not watching. They want to see their kids grow up. They'll, they want to, they want to travel. Okay. This is the sleeping church mark group or what can also be called the world. 
It is the house of Israel that, that went and, and, and scattered and, and mingled with all the Gentiles. That's why the Jews, if you heard the one of the talks not too long ago by the prime minister of Israel, he said that those that are in Israel, they're Jews because they're just the two bloodlines. They could trace those two bloodlines, but they can't trace the house of Israel because it is so scattered throughout the earth and so diluted. That is the Mark group. That is the church, the house of Israel, Gentiles grafted in. This in scripture is also referenced to us as the world. Okay? This is referenced to us as the bride of Christ, as the sons of God. We shared that in the last video. You're going to see more of this person explained today, this first group, as well as the rest, and it's going to blow you away. Okay? <laughs> so this Mark group is the reference to the world, and Matthew is the house of Judah to the Jews. Now Christ was a Jew. Christ was a Jew. So his people are the Jews, but when he came as uh, for salvation, he came for what? The world, the house of Israel, of which, of course, yes, the bride is, you can say, is a portion of if you want, but the bride is, you're going to see today, is clearly a separate group. Okay, so he came as a Jew to save the world, which is Israel, the house of Israel, and of course, the Gentiles in the world as a whole for those who will come to him. This is the group that was that was deceived at creation. And they were deceived by a group that was in the beginning but not the whole group, a portion of the group you're going to see. And when Christ came as a Jew to save them, <laughs> you're going to see what I'm talking about, because what do we know? We know in the second set of seven years of the end of days for trumpets, he's going to be here as Messiah, as the anointed Messiah, and they're going to start rebuilding the city and the streets, okay? All these things are begin to, begin to be explained right here in these first two keys. The number one most important key is this one right here. This, this gives you the intro to it, but you can also go to the description box under this video, and you can click a link to a free PDF book that we wrote in March or you can go buy the, the, the paperback if you want from Amazon. So you've got a copy and you could share and you can talk with people. You can share it with people. And you'll get even more detail in the book. But you can also, like I said, get the free PDF. Or you can go to the ministryrevealed.com website and download it there for free. Or read it right there from the website if you didn't want to download it. <coughs> You're also going to often hear me talk about um, uh, 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 um, the forum. You know, people posting things and messages and stuff on the forum. We're approaching, I think, 900 people in the forum now. And so there's all these sharing scriptures and news and events and prayers and family and all these things. You can join that as well from the ministryrevealed.com website in the menu box. Click on forum. It'll take you a few seconds to sign up. And you can come and join in the conversations going on there with like-minded people. So <laughs> what you're also going to understand is that how did we miss the second set of seven years or the, the other seven years? The answer is revealed in the third video. This third video called The Differences and the Truth reveals to us how the first set of seven for seals was misunderstood as being a combination seals trumpets for seven years for Matthew's group. And the reason for all of this and I'm, I'm, I'm rehashing for, for a purpose so that even those with understanding are going to remind themselves and refresh themselves who are still a little bit unclear of the creations that we're talking about. You'll, you're going to be reminded here. You're going to remember, okay, Luke is the bride of Christ and the easy years are coming to an end. We're like at the tail end right here. Then it's the escape. Then you've got the seven years of seals and the seven years of trumpets. One is for the house of Israel, the world, the sleeping church. One is for the Jews, for Judah. 
All right. This is the picture that we've got of the end of days. But the reason, and this is, I chatted on, I, I touched on this in the last video a little bit, because when you understand this, when you understand this revelation that it's seven and seven, you realize that everybody who believes that the tribulation is only one set of seven years, you realize that the reason they believe it is because everything they study end times is founded in the gospel of Matthew. Why do they think it's all based on Matthew? Why is it founded on the gospel of Matthew? Because we've been taught all of our lives through the church for hundreds of years that the in the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that they're telling us the same story from different perspectives. So we can take the foundation of Matthew and go into Mark and see a different little view and then go into Luke and see another different view. So that's why the, the, the seminaries and people, the churches everywhere, always go to the Gospel of Matthew for everything and use Mark a little bit and Luke even less to make additional points. This is what caused us to miss the rest of it. Now, what, do I think it was done on purpose? I used to think maybe there was something that had happened, but no. It was all the Lord's will for timing. For some reason, it wasn't meant to be revealed until it was revealed. And that began here in this ministry just over four years ago. It started on September 8th, 2017. Okay? So what happens is if all of your life and if all the church and everybody that talks about only seven years, they think it's only Matthew's seven years of tribulation that are coming. That means it's like they're at the end of Mark's gospel, but they don't realize that. Okay? They think it's the 144,000 to be sealed, the great multitude rapture, and bam, the seven years of trumpets or the seven years of tribulation for Matthew. They don't realize that the conversation they're having is precisely as if they're thinking they're waiting for the end of Mark. Okay, so this same group that only sees the seven years, which is the whole world outside of ministry revealed, let's face it, right? Only sees seven years. Do you know that those are the same people who believe that creation is from Adam? You believe that creation, that all of creation started from Adam. So you had the whole creation story and then Adam is that sixth day and we're in the 6,000. And when the millennial reign is over, the total from creation will be approximately 7,000 years. It's not even close. But why has that always been believed within the church and within people that like to teach on it? Because they only see the final seven years. They, just as they only see seven because of Matthew, they only see seven because of Matthew. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For those that have watched the last video. Okay, the last couple, three videos. What's this portion of Matthew? This is the exact same timing as when Adam was created. And we're living in those 6,000 to the 7,000th, the final 7,000. We're living in that type and shadow of the big picture, six, 7,000 years, which is the type and shadow of the final six right here, and seventh of the end of days, final seven years of trumpets. You see that? They see creation being from Adam, and from Adam till the end of the millennial reign is 7,000 years. So when they look at the rest of the creation story in Genesis 1, they don't see that there's this mysterious one that you see, we don't even have it here, because they're not going through any period of tribulation. They're a group that were predestined to have a time limit that they would be here, because that's what predestined means, 
there would be a, a limit to their time because the testing, the tribulation that comes for the next two groups is not for them. Just like Luke, Mark, and Matthew. Just like who they're speaking to in the revelation of the end of days. So this group sees seven years. They see creation being from Adam. That's exactly the revelation of the end of days. If we look at these years, see these years, we count them as years because in the end of days, they're the tribulation, the end days years. But there's no tribulation for this first seven because this is where the Holy Spirit has been working really hard over the last seven years to prepare the bride to get ready to, to light that light within them, the light of the Spirit within them so that, boom, when the time comes, when their limit of predestination has been reached, they will be made to light, which is Hanukkah. At the time, Christ will then come in the final 40, 50 days of this seventh year. This is the exact image, the exact type and shadow back into creation. They think it's from Adam. And so just like we read or we hear or listen to teachings from people that teach on seven years, whether renowned pastors or not there, they have only a portion of the story, less than half of it. But what do we see when they teach? They take seals and trumpets and they combine them to say they're both part of the final seven years. What did they do with Adam? They only believe there's 7,000 since Adam and it's the representation of Adam from Matthew. For those that watched the previous videos, we're going to get very clear on this soon. So what happens? Well, when they read chapter one's creation, they take this chapter one creation and they twist it into the Adam one and they say that it's only seven. Do you see the beauty in that? Do you see the understanding in that? They take seals and trumpets and they blend them together and they say it's all just seven years for Matthew. They go to the creation story. And they take the creation story and they say, oh, all that creation in chapter one was really the, the same as the one from, from, uh, um, from Adam. And they blend it all together and they say, see, we're only in 7,000 total. They've completely missed it and they've done it the whole way through. What else do we say? What else do they say? That the time of seals is also trumpets, so it's mixed together. They say that the Antichrist is Satan. So that's why it's only seven years because Antichrist is Satan. Yet when we go to Revelation 16, we see that all three of them are there, right? What do we see? Where is it? Da -da -da -da, Revelation 16. And uh, unclean spirits like frogs came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. So how is it that the dragon and the beast are there? Yet those two are supposed to be the same one. Ah, you see, these things start to, to become more and more clear because the, the beast is part of the Antichrist who goes against Christ's people, who is Mark's group, who is the sleeping church, who is the house of Israel, who is referenced as the world that he came for, you see, at his death and resurrection. And we, we have this video called, again, as you guys know, when we know what's going to happen at the midpoint of trumpets, when he's now got to come and save Matthew, right? The Jews never had a savior yet. They're waiting for that savior. It's going to be Christ. You guys know that that sacrifice again. Why? Because when he came the first time, he came for the house of Israel. He came for those who got deceived by Lucifer. Here is when Lucifer has been changed to Satan. This, this group refers to the fall. Guys, it is so awesome. Okay? So now when we go to creation, we see this as day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven. And then you go from Adam, and Adam is 
First 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. What happens at 4,000? Christ came. <laughs> Guys, I was talking with this. I had a, a I was talking with uh, Trisha yesterday. She wanted to chat. See, she had some questions. Oh, guys, I'm freaking out. <laughs> she she had some questions. We were going back and forth and so many awesome things got more and more clear. We finished our conversation. We were chatting for about an hour and a half. I went, <laughs> my wife's hilarious. We went, I went into the to the house and I, I'm I'm telling some of the conversation that we had and bringing clarity and and some of the experiences that Trisha had and and I'm talking about it and then all of a sudden a light bulb goes off and the light bulb was a question I know some of you guys had I was seeing it and understanding it and I think some of you also were but not to this extent and that's why I think some who have really good understanding of all of it we're still a little bit confused at this portion with Adam that we're going to cover in a little bit and it dawned on me as I'm talking with my wife and I start talking it through, as I've told you guys many times, she's the sounding board. She just listens. She looks at me. He's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I start going through it. I'm going through it. I'm going through it. And all of a sudden I lay it out and I say, that's it. That is the answer of creation of the groups of the three groups. And why in the events that took place? And so I am freaking out. And my wife just looks at me and she says, you're welcome. <laughs> she does it all the time. Whenever I go through these and, and new revelation just becomes clear and I could line it all up. And she understands it at that point. She just looks at me and says, you're welcome. <laughs> She's been doing that for four years. It's funny. So I'm freaking out. We have dinner. I call Trisha back and I say, man, you know, I wanted to share it with you first because we were having this conversation that brought this all about and I shared it with her and she boom now understood that missing piece and why and why Christ is called the second or the last Adam that he's this type and shadow not that he was the original Adam because he fell and everything but he was there was a purpose for that Adam and we're going to get into that because the timing is exact the days as thousands, like first, uh, uh, second Peter told us, verse eight, a day is unto the Lord as a thousand years, because to men, to people that were there, it would be like a thousand years, but it's a thousand, but it's a day to the Lord. And then second Peter reverses it and says, and a thousand is as a day unto the Lord. So in that conversation, the Lord is saying, the first seven are days to him, but they would be as thousands to men. And that the, the next 7,000, the next seven that are thousands to men that were living in since Adam are days to the Lord. So it would be 14 days to the Lord, 14,000 to man. And the revelation of the end of days, that's going to be the rescue of the world through Mark. And then the rescue of the Matthew for the Jews. It's going to be 14. All right. It is exact. And so as we were going through this and I, I am telling Trisha, there was this story and that's, I believe that's what my title is going to be. That um, it's all a fractal. And I said, a fractal. I've never heard of a fractal before. Well, she explained it and I was like, ah, I know what a fractal is. And a fractal is probably the image I used for this video as well. You're going to find out, brothers and sisters, that the revelation of the end of days being seven and seven to the final Jubilee, we've also taught is the big picture, which is seven and seven and six, right? Because the Lord returns after 13 years of tribulation, feet down on the Mount of Olives, and he destroys and deals with all those who came against Jerusalem during that final 14th year. So it would be the same as him coming after the 20th year in the big picture. Okay? So what we have is seven, seven, six, and then he's here and he's destroying all who came against. When it's all over, it's the final sevens in a, in a jubilee cycle from creation that are now come to an end 
and it will be the beginning of eternity. In That's in the big picture from creation, but in the end of days, this 14th year, and then the 15th year, which is the Jubilee, when they will all receive their land, what this is, is the beginning of the millennial reign that this will take place in. You see? This will take place in the millennial reign as like the first and second year of the millennial reign. And they have their thousand year promise. So it's there in years, but it's also these years, which are days unto the Lord in the big picture of thousands. This is also going to be the 14,000th or 21st thousandth year. Okay, we were sharing these in some of the last video. And we how we came about this in the revelation of the Gospels, that there was this, what about this timing for Luke? That's when we had the revelation and the understanding of the Jubilee cycles. And these were the final two cycles in the final Jubilee to the millennial reign. Okay? Hmm. So, spilled a little coffee. So, what happens is how this came to be understood that there was another seven was because of the story of Jacob. When we go to Jacob, chapter 31 of Genesis, we find this story that Jacob, whoops, come on now. Verse 31, sorry, 41. Um, Jacob says, I've been with you for 20 years. I served 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your cattle. This is the 20 years that we talk about. Okay. This is the 20 years to right here. The first seven that he worked for were this seven right here. And this seven, he was expecting Rachel. Of course, we know the story. He got Leah. At the end of this seven, not only did he have the, the wedding for Rachel, uh, for Leah that he, that he had to fulfill, but then he also received Rachel. But for Rachel, he still had to work seven more years. And in working those seven more years, during those seven years, she never got pregnant. It wasn't until after those seven years that she got pregnant. So you have the seven and the seven, and then you have the six for the cattle. And at the end of those 20 years, which is the same as saying at the end of the 13 years, he made a covenant with his father-in-law. What happens at the end of the 13th year? The Lord returns and he renews the covenant that he made in that final year. So it's the same story, the same type and shadow. But this portion right here isn't part of tribulation. This group isn't determined for tribulation. This is the bride of Christ, the sons of God. So in this, what do we see in the type and shadow of the story with Jacob? When we go to chapter 29, we see that he was so excited. Okay. He was so excited. He says, oh man, I'll work seven years for Jacob. These are the first seven years. So he's so excited to work for her for seven years. He says that they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had for her. It's as if it was only a few days. So it's this, it's just like we teach that this portion here, this whole thing about the bride, the sons of God, is part of, just like Christ, what we call the mystery, what Paul calls the mystery of this group, the mystery of the vanishing that's going to take place with this group who has the light of the Spirit in them, who is waiting for their body to be turned to light and vanished. Okay? Jacob was so excited that they seemed unto him but days. Hence, they flew by so quickly, they weren't part of a difficulty. But when we get to the next seven and the next six, you don't hear any of that. All right, yeah, he's got both. Now he's got to deal with two wives, uh, a couple of maids that he's got to sleep with to have more kids. And, you know, then Leah's upset. And Leah says to Rachel, hey, why don't you send him my way? I'll give you this. But if you want this, send him my way. Let him sleep in my bed tonight. I mean, come on, poor dude, right? <laughs> so 
It's the first seven that were the ones that flew by like days because he was so in love. Now understand, when we go to the creation now, and we take this back to the creation, this is one of the reasons, I'm not going to go into her whole story, but one of the reasons Trisha wanted to share with me was because of an experience she had in 2014, 15, I think maybe close to 16, 2016. And I'm, uh, she can share that with you guys if she chooses, because I was planning on doing a, a, a live show, but with everything that came about here in the last day or so, I didn't want to make it part of a live show and everybody was just going to be sitting there staring, listening to me because I wasn't going to go through questions yet. I wanted to lay this all out for people to better understand. And so hopefully uh, maybe Sunday night or something like that or Sunday we can do a video. We'll see how it goes. But she had an experience uh, in where the Lord brought her to the very beginning and, and explained and showed to her that had her freaking out for many months after that she was shown this. And what the Lord had showed her, what the Father had shown her, was the reason for his creation. So you got the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit's there. The, the reason for this creation that he allowed to be made, that he gave and the Son was to build and to do all these things, was because he wanted to share it with somebody. Okay? That's the gist of, of what she was saying. There's much more, but that's essentially what it was. And I started thinking, think of me when I do these videos. I couldn't imagine, if I had nobody to talk to, I'd be calling people on the phone just uh, out of the blue randomly. I'd go to the convenience store and, and just start talking to people. You see, when, when there's something we're so excited about and we're so happy about, what do we want to do? It doesn't matter who you are. Everybody wants to share it. You want others to know of this joy, of this excitement. And she said that's what the Lord was showing her before the beginning of everything. He was just he was just in love and, and wanted to share that love with others. And that's why the creation took place. It's just awesome. It's so awesome. So now, as we look at this, and we take this back so that Okay, we've understood here in this ministry for a long time, this revelation of Luke, that we're in this seven years of Luke and we're in this tail end portion, believing that Hanukkah is going to be that time of the escape and the 50 days of the Son of Man. The 40 out of those 50 is the beginning of the Son of Man's 40 days, where he's going to be here before the 14 years kick off in mid-January at Tuba Shabbat, the Festival of Trees with the Holy Spirit anointing, the Holy Ghost anointing, and then bang, the 14 years begin. Okay? So this portion here, which in the tribulation portion, we don't see it because this is the portion that he built in his love in the very first of all creations. The very first of all creations is related to this group right here. This Luke group is the very beginning of all of his creations. It was the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, and the very first creation Christ makes is what? The spirit realm. The angels. The angels. The sons of God which we most likely which we mostly refer to as now the bride of Christ the end time type and shadow we call the bride of Christ which is also the sons of God and where were the sons of God in the first creation now you say the first creation if these were the days day 1 day 2 of creation and this is the thousands from from Jacob for, uh, from Adam forward then what creation is this and of course, as we've been talking about, as we've been sharing, it's the creation of what's called the gap creation of Genesis 1 and 2. So you've got Genesis 1 and 2, and this group in this creation, this, this spirit realm that's in this creation, is in darkness. They're in darkness. And then what? The Spirit of God is with them. 
So the Holy Spirit is with this group. It is the Holy Spirit that is hovering over this group, that is with this group. That you can say, as we've shared before, is responsible over this group. And then what happens in verse 3? Right? So this group is a group with the Holy Spirit. And then what happens? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Well, it wasn't the sun or the moon or the stars. They weren't created yet. This is, of course, Christ. And we get this from John chapter 1. This is the light of Christ. And what happened? And God saw the light that it was good and divided the light from the darkness. This is, again, the original creation. This is where that Luke group is that he was so excited to create so that he had others to share his love with. You see, it was all in the spirit realm, which is why it was with the spirit of God. And then what happened? Then the light comes. Kind of like when Christ came, he is the light of the world. John talks about it. Well, do you realize that in this conversation that we're talking about and the very beginning is we're saying this group for the chapter one of Genesis, chapter one, verse one, two, and part of three is the group that's the mystery portion of the first seven creation. And when we go into John chapter one, which is the type and shadow of Genesis chapter one at that portion, we see this light. And this light is, of course, Christ. John 1 verse 4, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light, check this out, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. John wasn't that light, but he came to bear witness of that light, right? He was sent to bear witness of that light. Listen to this. This is key now. So we see that he brought, he bear witness to that light. Let me get out of here. Okay. So where am I? So he came to bear witness to that light. And that light in Genesis 1 shows up in verse 3. So this formation, which was all in darkness, it was the only group in actual darkness, had the Spirit of God. They all were created with the Spirit of God within. And they were in the darkness until Christ became light. When God said, let there be light, and Christ became light, there was now a division within the darkness between light and dark. Right? Between light and dark. When we take the, the vision of the end days and we say, okay, what he's talking about here is this first group. It's this first group who have the Luke group who have the spirit within, who have the spirit of God, they are referred to as the bride or the sons of God. What happens? It said they were separated. The darkness was separated. The light separated from the darkness. And in John chapter 1, it said, of course, that that light was Christ. But what happened? When it separated the darkness, those who remained in the darkness never comprehended the light. So that's where this separation of these spirit-filled beings began. This is where it began. Right towards the tail end, right here. There was this creation of the Spirit-filled, Holy Spirit-filled group represented as Luke, the bride, the sons of God. They're called the mystery in many places, which is a reference to Christ, but also in the end-time revelation, in the end-time understanding is 
the mystery of the vanishing of the bride group, this mystery group who have the spirit within, who have the light shining within, waiting for the redemption of their bodies, the light to shine on the out for the world to see. Who's the world that's going to see it? Hello. Mark. Now, check this out. So when the light came, it's like saying right here that Luke's Luke's revelation here and this portion here, you can also say, I don't have this, you know, to type it all out. I didn't make this. Somebody made this for me. Is you can also say Genesis chapter one, verse one through three, and it would take you to like right just above the line. You have the mystery creation, those that are the spirit of God formed with the spirit of God, have the spirit of God within. They were all a part of it until let there be light came. The light shows up and some of that darkness didn't comprehend the light. But those who stayed in the light, hello. Do you understand that there's more than one son of God? One, there's two there's two types of the sons of God. Let me show you. See, there's the sons of God right here in Genesis chapter 6. The sons of God that went in unto the daughters of men. Yikes! That doesn't sound like the spirit-filled bride of Christ. Well, you're right. It's not. It's those that remained in the darkness. Not those that came into the light. It is those that remained in darkness. Okay? The fallen angels. So what you're going to find out is that this group that was created here, who are the angels, the spirit realm, you had those that went to the light, which was the majority, and you have those that did not go to the light that became part of the fallen angels. But in the story of Genesis, this little line right here that would be above the line between seven and eight is when the light shows up. And when that light shows up, it now in the end time understanding of it, this Hanukkah, this everywhere we're showing it, it's now followed by light after this group is the Hanukkah connection to Christ's birth. You see, to Christ's birth. In this case, it's not his birth and creation. It was when he became light. And when he became light, it separated those in the darkness and those who wanted to go to the light. Those in darkness remained in the darkness and the rest were in the light. They are the Luke group. They are the bride of Christ, the sons of God. And so what happens? If this imagery of Christ now coming at this portion right here, who, who has now become light, listen to this. John 1 verse 10. He was in the world. Oh, let's go up one. That was the true light, okay? Which lighteth every man that come to him in the world. He was in the world. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world, okay? Just in case you don't understand. The world, the world, the world. In one small verse, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Do you know what this is saying? When he came as light, okay, he's now come as light. Let's go to Genesis chapter one. Watch this. This is just mind blowing. Many guys, <laughs> it's going to take more than one watch. All right. One than one viewing. This is that creation spirit. He comes as light. He divides now the light from the darkness. Those in the light are the spirit-filled ones. Those that remained in the darkness, what did they do? You're going to find out in a little bit because this is something Trisha caught. Okay? Remember the revelation. The spirit of God is not heard of again except for the word cool in chapter 3. The spirit of God is only in this creation. In this verse 1 2 is the only place he's there. Who is over this second one as days? Who's over this second one as days? 
which are like thousands. The world, Christ, okay? Christ, this is the group that Christ came for. Christ was involved in what? He built the world. He came into the world. The world is the sleeping church, the Gentiles grafted into the house of Israel world. And they, and what did it say? And uh, they knew him not. When, when did he show up? Right here, right? Right this little tail end, he turns to light. And when he turns to light, what do we get in Genesis 1? He turns to light. The light saw that it was good and he divided the light from the darkness. So now you've got the separation of what? The bride of Christ is gone, separated from the darkness. It's like a type and shadow of the bride now being removed. And so now what does it say? And God called the light day and the darkness night and the evening and the morning were the first day. So now where are we? Now we're at the point where you're at the first day by the next verse. The first day is light and darkness right here. What happened before that first day? He came and divided the light from the darkness. What is Christ doing in the end days revelation? He's coming right during this portion here for 40 days. What is he doing? We've been teaching it forever. He's coming as the son of man for 40 days. So what's he going to be? What's it going to be like? John chapter 1. What did he say? All right, separated the light from the dark. The darkness didn't recognize it. And then what happens? He was in the world. He's coming to the world for 40 days. And the world that was made by him in the days of creation, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the world knew him not. What happened in the creation of days? Well, we know that there was a rejected, they, they rejected the cornerstone, right? The cornerstone, which they refused. So he built the world and he did it with some of the angels. And then he got what? He was rejected. And they destroyed, essentially, they were destroying the earth. That creation of men and women who became idolatrous, who were, who were vanity and vain that we shared in the last video. So he came into the world at that point and they knew him not. So you have what? You have this group of light. You have this group representing the world that he comes to. Just as we know, he's coming before this whole thing here of the next seven, which is exactly what follows in the, in the, in the revelation of the beginning with days, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then what does it say? And he came unto his own. And his own received him not. Well, who are his own? Judah. Remember, he's referred to as the last Adam. So he's a type and shadow. I'm not saying he's Adam, but he is a type and shadow of the first Adam. And when he comes now as the last Adam, when is he coming? Right here. It's the same story. It's the same story. So when I was talking about, oh, wait till you see the detail. When I was talking about this with Trisha, one of the words, one of the things that she had received a while back was, was the word toroidal. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, fractals. Fractals. Okay. The Lord was telling her it was a fractal. And I had said, I didn't know what that was until I looked at it. And I said, oh, I remember that. I'm gonna, we're going to listen here to about a minute or so. And it's exactly what we're showing you. Uh, the revelation that we have been given of the end of days being a mysterious seven of the preparation of the bride, those with the light that are going to be separated before the next seven who Christ was over, who Christ was involved in the creation of with the world and everything, but it got corrupted by Lucifer and the fallen angels. This is those that he's coming to save, his lost sheep. It's the same type and shadow in the end of those that he was part of creating in the beginning. And then the final seven 
which is the creation that we're in from Adam and Eve to the 6,000 and 7,000 that we're, that we're a part of right now, was the Adam portion for which Christ is coming at the beginning of trumpets as the last Adam, and he's going to rebuild the city and the streets and the temple. It is, as you're going to see, a fractal. It's the end days, 21 years slash 14 years. But from creation, it's 21,000 years or the 14,000 years from creation. And it's a, it's, it's a fractal. It's an image of the same image that was in the beginning. It's a reflection. The deeper you go, the same thing shows up again and again and again. Check this out. The key to fractal geometry and the thing that evaded anyone until really Mandelbrot sort of said this is the way to look at things is that if you look on the surface, you see complexity and it looks very non-mathematical. What Mandelbrot said was that think not of what you see, but what it took to produce what you see. That was interesting. You see, you might see on the surface and everything looks like it's not really in order. Think about scripture. Think about the end time revelation and all the confusion that's been around forever. And then think of the revelation we've received here in this ministry. And you're about to see with greater clarity than what's already been shown that the beginning and the end are a mirror image on a different scale from each other. It's all in unison. It takes endless repetition. And that gives rise to one of the defining characteristics of a fractal, what mathematicians call self-similarity. The main idea is always, as you zoom in and zoom out, the object looks the same. If you look at something at this scale, and then you pick a small piece of it and you zoom in, it looks very much the same. The whole of the fractal looks just like a part, which looks just like the next smaller part. The similarity of the pattern just keeps on going. See that? That is the revelation. That's it. The, this is the ultimate proof, the ultimate evidence of the revelation here given in ministry revealed that's been going on for just over four years now. And as we're coming to the tail end and all this has been opening up in Genesis as we have never seen it or understood it before, it has proven itself out and you're going to see even more proof of it today. Greater revelation of that understanding that Luke is that first mystery creation to the light and then the light shows up and the light divides the darkness and the darkness didn't understand it. But those that were in that darkness that were spirit filled went to go be with the light, okay? Then he makes a creation of the world and everything in it. And what happens? It's corrupted by those who were fallen. So then what happens? There's another creation where the father creates Adam, who is the type and shadow of Christ when he comes as the last Adam. And when he comes, check this out, when Adam came, what was he here for? What was his purpose? He was coming to rescue. He was coming to, to correct what had happened. You could say to save those from the creation in the days of chapter one. But what happened? He fell. Satan came and he fell. So what happened? He never saved them. As Adam, as the as Adam, he came to rescue. He came to bring correction and redemption to that. But in his fall through Eve and through Satan, he failed. But guess what? He came just like the end of days. He's coming to what? 
He didn't come for the house of Judah the first time. He came at the time of his death and resurrection. He came for the house of Israel. He came to save the world. When he was here as Adam, or the type and shadow of Adam, he came as Adam. What did he come to do? He came to save the world, his first creation. But what happened? Adam fell. Adam fell. He never saved that creation. But what was Adam? He was God's chosen, who represents Matthew's group, Judah. So you've got the Holy Spirit's group, you've got Jesus' group, and you've got God's group, who he started with, Adam. So now the type and shadow of Christ in the end of days as the last Adam has to come and save Judah now. Because remember, when he fell as the first Adam, as, as not as the first Adam, but when the first Adam fell and didn't save the world, that, first, that creation that he made in the days of chapter 1, he had to come and save them some other way, didn't he? Didn't he come 4,000 years later? He came 4,000 years later, which... In the big picture of the revelation, we're in these years right now. 4,000 years is right here, right? <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make this as crystal clear as I can. And there's going to be repetition to make sure you get it. You're going to want to listen to this again and over again. Because this is going to blow your mind. The first Adam is represented here. The last Adam is represented here. But the first Adam was to bring this back into order, if you will. But he failed in the back in the beginning, in Genesis. When he failed to correct this because, there, uh, because of the fall that was in there and the corruption that was in there, he comes as Adam, as God forms him and creates him, He's unable to save that first creation in the beginning. But who was he? Who did he represent? Who was Adam at the second uh, in the in this creation of Adam? He be, he was the representation of God's chosen people. This is the house of Israel. This is the house of Judah. What where is Christ from? Christ is a Jew. So he comes into the world. They don't recognize him and they're deceived and corrupted. Then Adam comes along, God's creation with Adam to help bring about a restoration to the first one. And he failed. So now who had to be rescued? Now the house of Israel had to be rescued. And the house of Judah has to be rescued. Do you see that? So in the creation, those in chapter 1 in the days fell and had corruption and didn't realize it as, as, as um, Romans 8 told us. They were, part, they were what? They were the creatures, the original formation. And they were, they were subject to vanity unknowingly. Because those fallen angels that were over them, as as Messiah, as the as the Lord was was refused by those builders, he was rejected. So this group that he was a part of, that he helped create, that he built the world and everything, and had those builders with him, he was coming to save them. And this type and shadow of saving was as the first Adam, but he failed. So now, not only was this first creation of people not saved, this second creation, which was Adam in the house of Judah in its type and shadow, now also needed saving. So what happened? What happened? 
Christ comes 4,000 years after Adam. And what does he do? In his death and resurrection, did he say that he was coming to save the, the house of Judah? No. He came for the house of Israel. And the house of Israel, as I was telling you, is the world and the Gentiles are grafted in with them. So he had to come and still had to come and save. But now it wasn't through a living of a life and so forth in that sense, in the type of Adam, the first Adam. He now came and do, did it by his blood, by his death and resurrection, by his sacrifice, by taking on all the sins of the world, the world, his group that he came for. Okay. Now, this, this is not for the new people. This, this, you're, you're just not going to follow this. So now, we are in this 6,000, right? Close to the end of the 6,000 in the big picture from creations or from the, in the beginning. And in the 6,000 from in the very beginning, that puts us, you know, uh, uh, from Adam in the 6,000 that we're in, when did Christ show up? When did Christ show up as death and resurrection to save the world, the first group in his first creation that he made in Genesis 1? He came at the 4,000th year. So if we're looking at this as 8,000, 9,000, or 15,000, 16,000. These are the thousands that are as days that we've shared, right? He came in the 4,000th year, at the end of the 4,000th year. And in his death and his resurrection, all now in the world can receive salvation and be brought back to him. When we take the same imagery and we bring it to the actual end of days. Did we not share in a video called again? That he must do this again as a as 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 a sacrifice, as the bull, as the bullock, as the atonement. Because Judah wasn't a part of it. Remember? I came not, but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's what he says in what? Matthew 12? No, uh, I think it's 15 or in John. But he says, I came not, but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So in his death and resurrection, in the thousands years count, he came at the 4,000th year in the, right? There's the Adam, the 6,000 for Adam to the 7,000 millennial reign. He came in the 4,000th year. And when he came in that 4,000th year, he did not come for Judah. Remember, he also told them, he said that um, you, you, um, you are not of my sheep. That's why you don't hear me. Only those who are of my sheep hear my voice and know me. They didn't know him. What did he say? You are not of my sheep. So he says, you're not of my sheep. He says, I came only but for the house of Israel. Clearly, that means not the house of Judah. And with the house of Israel, Represented as Mark, we know the Gentiles are grafted in as well, and it represents the world which he created and was a part of. You see? But now we take this imagery into the time that we're in right now, into this time that we're in. In fact, before we jump to that, let me show you something even just so incredible. So, so, so incredible. Give me a moment here. I've got some great things in that to follow, but um, where is it? You'll notice that these are all one, one, one. You see that? 
Romans 1, Hebrews 1, Colossians 1, Genesis 1, John 1. When you go to those ones, all of those ones, you're going to see the story of the original creation, or not the original creation, sorry, the, the, the spirit of those that were called the sons of God. You see, if we go to Romans chapter 1 again real quick, or sorry, John chapter 1, we see this, this thing that we were talking about right here. He comes into the world as the beginning of the 40 days, right? So in the end, he's coming as the beginning of the 40 days. The world isn't going to know who he is, and the Jews are going to reject him. That's exactly what we know is going to happen during the 40 days. Well, we're told in John that that's the story of what happened as he came as light. They're not going to know who he is and his own, because he's a Jew, and his own receive him not. But then what does it say? But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So those who recognize it are saved. They're the sons of God, the bride of Christ. But those who didn't recognize it were the world in which he created and designed and built. And those who were his own as the type and shadow from, from Adam received him not. Uh, yeah, received him not. So you got this same imagery going on in the end of days that was part of the creation or in the creations that he was involved in. But now watch this. We were talking about John. Uh, uh, um, yeah, John chapter one, which was the sons of God. And then what was this other part? Oh, this one here. Let's go to Colossians. Watch this. So now what we're talking about, the escape of the bride is about to happen. This first Genesis one portion. Let me go to Genesis one. This this creation and becomes light who have the spirit of God. Who has the spirit of God? Those who have the spirit of God are the sons of God. Remember? Is it Romans uh, Romans 8? Watch this. Just so you guys can remember this. Have this, have this understood. Look at this. Romans 8 verse 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God. So the sons of God are those led by the Spirit of God. They were this first creation of spirits. Who were the only ones in those three groups of John, of John 1? Well, the world who was these people in the days knew him not. Those in chapter 2 of Genesis, which is representative of God's people, the Jews, received him not. The only ones that did were those with the Spirit of God who are called the sons of God, the bride of Christ. But now watch this. You want to see something that's going to freak you out? It says in verse 3, as we know, Genesis 1 verse 3, God said, let there be light. That was Christ. And God saw that the light was good and he divided the light from the darkness. So now... This period of time is now right at the time now where the beginning of this next creation has taken place. This next creation, so where, where would that be? Right here. This is now that next creation. These are the creations of the days, which are the world, the house of Israel, those that got corrupted because of the fallen angels, Lucifer and, and, and idolatry and, and vanity, vain show. Just like the Antichrist is going to do to this group during seals. To try to corrupt them and take them. So what happens now? We're at the very first part, right? We're now at the beginning, day one. Right at the beginning of day one. Who was, who was created into light? Who was turned to light? Who would have been the first on this earth that he created? Christ. Day one, the light was first. The light was first. Are you ready for this? This might freak you guys out a little bit. 
Let's go to Colossians 1. Watch this. Everything is in 1, 1, 1. We got so many answers to this creation story. Watch this. Uh, let me see where I wanted to go. Watch this. Here's the first group again. So what would this represent? Who is this supposed to represent? The first creation spirit of God, sons of God. All right. They're going to be taken first. And then it would be day one, which is the world portion. Listen to what it says. Starting in Colossians 1 verse 12. Give thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Partakers. You're going to see who the partakers are in a little bit, brothers and sisters. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. That's only, you could only be in that darkness going back to the creation if you're in verse 2. Because after the light was there, there was light. So again, it's the partakers of the inheritance in light who were in darkness, saved from that darkness, and translated, hello, carried away, removed, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption. Remember this word redemption? This is the one out of all the Gospels. It's only found in Luke's discourse at Christ coming in a cloud for the bride of Christ. So what is this? What is this exactly an image of? It is the exact image of Genesis 1 right here. Those in the darkness have the spirit of God as the sons of God who are those who are co-heirs with Christ. They are co-heirs with Christ. And then what? The light had come, and then once that darkness and the light is separated, it becomes day one. And the first person, the first created in this day one, or not the first created, the first in light in day one is Christ. Are you ready for this? This is probably going to melt your minds a little bit at this part. Verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God, listen to this, the firstborn of every creature. What? I will guarantee you, you have never seen that understood like this before. He is the firstborn. Wait a second. We were told Christ is the only begotten son. This doesn't say the only begotten son here. Christ is the only begotten son from the very beginning in the spirit realm who created those angels with the father and everybody else. This is the firstborn of every creature. The firstborn of every creature creature what do we know the original creature was the original formation who is the original formation we taught it in the last video the original formation are the males and females that were created like uh, uh, and god said let us make man in our image in our likeness. Hold on a second. How can they be created in their image? Okay, we know that the angels were involved with Christ, but definitely Christ was involved in this because he was the creator of all of it. But we just read that he was the firstborn in all of this creation of creatures. Not the only begotten son, but it sounds like he was created as the light who was on the earth at that time. And right here, we're told in the exact sequence of orders that after that first group in the spirit portion, he was the firstborn of every creature. He was the firstborn in the original formation 
He was that light separating the darkness in that original formation. So whatever he was in this first born, born being, do you understand there had, this is getting heavy, I know. There, there had to be an image. There had to be an image. Right? There was some sort of creation of males and females here in an image of what? Well, if God the Father is in heaven and it's he's only spirit, what image did the Son have here as light and in this image here? There had to be an image. You following? <laughs> it's, it's very different. It is not this group that was involved or that was part of this spirit here. Watch this. Let me go into this. Who is this group? Okay. We're going to see who's involved in this group here. We now just read in 1 Colossians that Christ was the first created in the original formation. There was an image that they could use to make those males and females. That this is, that's why this is all his group. So in the end of days and in, and in following the chart all the way through from Adam and so forth, the type and shadow of the house of Israel that has become the world and that is connected to the Gentiles is the exact type and shadow, the exact, uh, uh, um, what did we call that? The exact um, fractal. It's the exact fractal of what happened in creation. It's the same type and shadow. He's, he, it's like he's saving all the way back to the beginning, the spirit of those that were in the beginning as this house of Israel, Gentiles, world that it's become now. It's the same type and shadow of the people he's saving. And, and who was involved? Who, was, who, who brought this fall to these guys here? Well, those who fell from this first spirit being with the spirit of God here. In this group down here for Matthew, there was a fall as well through, through uh, Adam and Eve. So this is what Trisha caught last night. She says all three of them had a fall. There was a fall from the light into the, uh, the darkness into the light. Those that didn't recognize the darkness didn't want any part with it. They already had. You have to understand, who is this group? Okay? Who is this group? Well, we know that they're the fallen angels. But can we prove that they still had ability to build and be involved in this one? Because they're the ones that corrupted and caused the fall of this group. And then Adam with Eve were the, was the, were the ones involved in falling, causing this group to fall. So in all three, we'll get into the details of this, but all three had a group that fell. Check this out. Here's what Trisha caught. Mark's group, the, the world, as we say, the house of Israel and so forth, was, as we've been telling you, is Jesus' group, is, are the ones he came to save in the was and in the is and is to come. The, the world, the house of Israel. This is God's group. This group, the house of Judah, he still has to save as well. They could both be saved, even though there was a fall in each of them they're both going to have a path to salvation still. But do you know those that fell in the first one can never be saved? Do you remember that? Remember the angels that kept not their first estate, but fell? He's reserved in everlasting chains of darkness. Do we know what it says? Remember in, uh, in Matthew chapter 12? This is the answer to what I'm telling you right here. Listen to what it says. Wherefore I say unto you all, uh, wherever, or sorry, wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven unto men. 
And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Do you know why, brothers and sisters? All those being saved have the option here. Even though there was a fall, they will all have the option. They can all be saved through Christ. What about Matthew's group? Matthew's group, they can still all be saved because you can speak bad against the Father. You can speak bad against the Son. You can do all manner of sin, but if you repent and you come to Christ, you can be forgiven. All right? You can be forgiven. But guess what? Who's this first group a part of? This first group. Who's over the first group? If the second one is Jesus' group, the third one is God's group, who's the first ones? The first one is the Spirit of God through them. So by rejecting the Spirit of God in this first creation, this gap creation, by refusing that light and through the Spirit of God, what did they do? They were the ones who blasphemed the Holy Ghost. There is no salvation for them because they blasphemed the Holy Ghost during this spirit creation in the gap creation first portion. But those who got corrupted in this second one, in the days as thousands, they were saved. When God came to save them through this uh, creation with Adam, he had failed. And that caused this group that we would say we're in now, in, that, in the big picture sense of looking at things, also fell and was corrupted. But Christ came from Adam at the 4,000th year. And in the 4,000th year, see, 1,000 from Adam, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 from Adam. He came and had, in his death and resurrection on the cross, he saved this group right here. He saved the Mark group. He brought the, the ability for all of them to come back in to salvation through him. Because when they were corrupted in that type and shadow of the first group in creation, in the days, they didn't know any different. They fell to the corruption because of who was over them and corrupted them. And they didn't know any different. Christ had been rejected at that point. So the end of days when Christ is coming at the end of seals to save this group, it's the final redemption in the imagery all the way back to creation. And you see, in this being the, the 7,000, the 6,000 to the 7,000, the final group that we're in, Christ came in the fourth year. Christ came in the fourth year and brought salvation to here. But when he came, he said, it was only to the house of Israel and the Gentiles grafted in in the world. But Judah wasn't saved. But Judah still has to be saved. And what have we shown you in the end of days? That in the fourth year, remember, Christ is here as the last Adam. One, two, three and a half years. In that fourth year, Messiah is going to be cut off in what we have called again. And when he does, who is he saving? The house of Israel? No, their period is done. Their portion of time is over at the end of seals. So why is he being cut off here? Because when, he, when the first Adam came and the first Adam failed, this creation that was God's creation now also needed a saving. They also fell. And Christ, in the 11th year, 
in the 18th year, as we've shown through all of these books, what's going to happen? He's going to be the sacrificial bullock, the atonement for the house of Judah, who still had not been saved because they were blinded. Holy crap. Did you guys follow that? I just threw a whole bunch of it at you. Did you hear that? The first group is the spirit realm. Those that were in darkness that came to light. When the light came, there was a group that remained in the darkness and refused the light. And there were those that went in the light and had the spirit of God. They are the sons of God who have the spirit of God. They are the bride of Christ, the sons of God that are about to be removed when their bodies will now be redeemed and turned to light. The world is going to see it. The church, the house of Israel is going to see it. He's then going to be here for 40 days and they will not know that it's him, the church. And the Jews, his own people, will reject him. This is the end of days. This is the revelation of the end of days. He came in the 4,000th year represented by this as the thousands. Represented by this period in the thousands of years count. And when he comes in the end again and they're rebuilding the city and the streets, when he comes as the second or the last Adam, what's going to happen in the fourth year, that three and a half year time frame? Time frame? He's going to be sacrificed again this time because of what failed in the fall with Adam the first time. Oh. Let this sink in. Remember what Trisha said? The whole thing is a fractal. The entire thing is a fractal. You have the big original fractal, right? You have the big one and then you zoom in and you zoom in and you zoom in and you zoom in and it keeps bringing about the same image the whole way through. It's not only in this fractal image, it's in everything in the earth. It's like the, it's, you see, they call it, a God, is God a mathematician? Yeah, of course, right? It's eternity. It never ends. We have just shown that the revelation of the end of days is the copy image on a smaller scale of years to the original creation of thousands from in the beginning. What the? This is crazy. Those that fell within those of the sons of God who were present with the Spirit are now considered, and as we know, are the blasphemers of the Holy Spirit and hence can never be saved. This group's choice was the Holy Ghost light or its rejection of it in the beginning. There was no other option. And the proof is in what Christ told us in Matthew 12. You can speak against me. We know you can speak against him, the Father. But if you speak against that portion of the Holy Ghost, you speak against the Holy Ghost, you're finished. This world, the next world, it doesn't matter. That's why you notice there's nothing here. There is no judgment portion to this group right here. This group 
which is that first creation of spirit and the Holy Spirit as the sons of God, those who have the spirit of God, the fire, the light inside, are the sons of God who be who will be removed. They will not experience anything. Why? Because they weren't part of the fall. They didn't fall in this portion of the spirit. This group here has a fall, but a plan for salvation. This group here fell, but there's a plan still coming of salvation. The revelation of the end, my brothers and sisters, is the entire revelation of the beginning. It is an image of the beginning. We can prove these things out even more. Check this out. Listen to Romans 1. Let me bring it up in Esword. I am so grateful for Esword that we can have these word definitions and everything. All right? Let's go into Esword. Listen to this. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Huh. (laughs) They're not overly clearly seen to the world, right? Being understood by the things that are made, right? The trees and everything. Even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Listen to this. Ready for this? Because that... When they knew God, remember, these are end time glasses, brothers and sisters. This is the revelation of the end of days ministry that we're sharing. We're looking at this through end time eyes, not the is, but the is to come. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain, idolatrous, vain. Remember this? Became idols and vanity in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Sounds like that group of the angels who received not the light but got very prideful in themselves as angels thinking of the power and this authority and the things that they had, they became foolish and vain and began to have this idolatry of of what they were involved with and what they can do. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image of, made like to corruptible men and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. Who's this creature, brothers and sisters? Right? In that original formation. So this group who grew in vanity and thought themselves wiser than God, who are the ones that knew God, who what? Who were what? Who knew him, who were with him, who understood these things of God, became wise and vain in their ways. And so what happened? They corrupted what? The creature. The original formation. This vain show. Right? This vain show. They're the ones that had this vanity and this idolatry. It's telling us right there in Romans. 
It's those who fell, who were in the darkness, who had this vanity and turned from God and changed the glory and made this group of men like unto the Im- their own image. Where do we see that? Right here. And God said, let us make man in our own idol vain show. You see that? That's the proof right there. That is the absolute proof that those involved in this were the ones who were who had gone into idolatry and vanity within themselves and idolizing the image of men instead of the creator who was what? Christ. Who was Christ represented as through this in the creation? The light who had separated the light from the day. This is craziness. It's so awesome. This is that group who who refused the light, remaining in darkness, who got vain, who became vanity, who, who sought themselves in their vainness, who were the ones who were also the sons of God. They were a part of the sons of God. Through the Spirit of God. And they fell, but because what they did was a blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, they are unredeemable. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Watch this. Where's this other part? Uh, Oh, down here. Watch this. Watch this. Let's go into Romans and let's continue building on this understanding. Okay? Building on these groups that we see. We talked already. Those led by the Spirit of God. This is the Genesis 1 people are the sons of God. Those that remained in the Spirit of God, right? They are the, the Spirit of adoption. They are joint heirs with Christ. You're going to see this understanding when we get to Hebrews chapter 1. Okay? They're joint heirs to Christ, glorified together. When we come down further down here, in Romans 8, verse 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, you're about to witness some very telling words, probably like you've never understood them before. And I can speak for myself in that point as well. It says, verse uh, Romans 8, verse 29. For whom he did foreknow. Is he saying he foreknew everybody? No. It says whom. So a group. Those for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. He limited their time in advance. We know this time is the group as the bride, as the sons of God, who will not experience tribulation. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be, check this out, check this out, I don't know why I have them the same color. Let's make it this. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Did you hear that? That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Whoa, hold on a second. Didn't we just read that he was the firstborn creature? He was the firstborn creature, it said in the other one. Because what? In this image, in this, in this creation here of the world, in this group that he was a part of, it was his image. It, it, was, it was him 
who was the firstborn. He was the first one created in this whole group. But this is talking about something else. This in Romans 8 is telling us that he was the firstborn among many brethren. Who are these brethren? Meaning what? We're told that Christ is the firstborn among many brethren. Well, who's who's he talking about here? Who is this entire conversation about? Those that were predestined. Those that he foreknew. Those that are the sons of God. Those that are like the bride of Christ. Those that have the spirit of God within. This is that, that, that gap creation at the very beginning of Genesis. Christ was the firstborn. Among all of them in the spirit realm, Christ was the first one before the rest of the brethren in the spirit realm. The angels. Listen to what it says in verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate. See again, those whom he predestinated, whom he foreknew. It's not everybody. Them. Listen to this. Them, not all, not everyone, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified, made innocent, free. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Brothers and sisters, it's not everybody. There are groups of people. This this is the story over and over and over again of the three groups. The one over the Spirit over them, the Lord Christ over them, and the Father. Over and over and over and over again. You remember, it's the same thing as saying, it's the story of the harvest. First fruits brought to the Lord. The great multitude rapture is the main harvest. And the corners and the gleaning are the final portion, that smaller portion that remains to represent Judah. The whole story is the revelation of the three groups. And it begins in Genesis 1, and it ends at the end of Revelation. You following this? This is crazy stuff, guys. Listen now, let's go into Hebrews. Check this out. This is awesome. Hebrews chapter 1. Told you. (laughs) 1, 1, 1, outside of Romans 8. Verse 3. No, we can start right here. Verse 2 hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Hello. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Look at this word image. It's only used once. See? The exact character, the stamp, the copy, the exact copy, the exact image in his character of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Then, uh, sorry, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty uh, of the majesty on high. Again, the father. Being made, Hebrews 1 verse 4, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Okay? The angels. In that first creation, that spirit realm. For which of the angels said he, At any time thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. 
And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels, uh, sorry, and let all the angels of God worship him. Wasn't that what we all do? Those with the spirit of God within, we worship him. We're desiring, seeking him. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits? Hello. And his spirits uh, and his ministers a flame of fire. But the son, but unto the son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Listen to this, verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness. Ready for this? Above thy fellows. Who are these fellows? These fellows are represented by the angels who were that first creation of those who have kept their estates, who are the type and shadow as the bride and the sons of God as the Luke portion. But you want to see who they are? Above thy fellows. Who are the fellows? The partakers, the participants, the sharers. Who are these guys? Who are the partakers? Who are the sharers? Who are those who are going to partake in these things of Christ? Right? Watch this. Romans, back to Romans 8 that we were before this. Let's see who these fellows are, these partakers are. Okay? Remember the Spirit of God, the sons of God? What are they called? They're called joint heirs. What are these joint heirs? Fellows. They're fellows. They're partakers. You're going to see this um, uh, uh, in the other section. Is it here? Is it here? Watch this. There's another section. I think maybe it's the Hebrews one. In Hebrews chapter one. Yeah, watch this. Oh, no, we were in Hebrews one. So you see that they are the fellows. So being a co-heir, Christ is the head. Christ is the top of the heirs. The angels, the sons of God who have the spirit of God are called his fellows. And fellows are co-heirs. Are not, the, is not the bride of Christ called a co-heir with Christ? Guys, I told you, it's everywhere. The revelation, the whole story of the revelation is true. Here it is here in Colossians 1. Let's go to Colossians 1. I want to make sure you, you understand besides just fellow, you're going to see these partakers right here. Colossians 1 verse 12. We, that's right. We shared this a little earlier. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. What are they doing? Share, participate. Who are they referred to as? Fellows who are co-heirs, who are those who are co-inheritants, who are translated into his kingdom that were taken out of the power of darkness at the time of redemption? How much more can we show? Like this is, it, it's, it's, it's quite insane to be able to see all of this, to be able to understand these things, guys. The beginning is the end. Let me help show some clarity in this again, just a little bit more as we bring it to an end, because I just want to see where we're at. Okay. So we go to Genesis 1. You guys now should be able to clearly see and discern 
that this creation right here is the creation of the Spirit of God, which was over the fellows who were created after Christ, right? Who are the first begotten, who, who were after the first begotten or the, the firstborn. These are the fellows. These are the co-heirs. These are those that have the Spirit of God as the sons of God. These are those that when the light was brought forward, they accepted the light. And those that fell and rejected that light and stayed in the darkness, they fell and they corrupted this corruption that was days that also represent thousands, but days to the Lord. At this time of day one, the very first one that was here was light. And we were told that the firstborn of, he was the firstborn of the creation, uh, sorry, of the creatures. You see, this is the beginning of that creation portion, the next seven that are days as thousands right here, which represents Mark group, which is the world, which is the house of Israel, which is, you see, the ones that he came for. And you have one, two, three, four, five, six. You got the males and females that were in the image that was the first image, but got corrupted by the fallen ones with Lucifer in them and corrupted this group who was unaware of this corruption. As it said in Romans, they didn't know it was the only thing they knew. So when this creation was all over, and you get to this seventh day rest, which is also a type of a thousand years, but one day unto the Lord. Then the father comes and the father in the garden, which is what happens now at the beginning of trumpets. The Lord has come on heavenly Mount Zion with paradise. And Christ is now going to be the representation of the last Adam to save. Judah, who fell because of the first Adam in the, in, the, in the setup to save the first creation. Are you guys following that? It's mind-blowing. It is the most mind-blowing, most mind-stretching, expanding, just... There's no words. I was saying this the other day to a couple people too. There's no words. Incredible, mind-blowing, judge, whatever you want to use. It's just not significant to show what has happened here. What happened at the time of the last 7,000, this beginning with Adam? God the Father was there too, and he was walking in the garden with him, wasn't he? Well, who comes at the end of the sixth seal? Hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. The Father is here. He's there on heavenly Mount Zion. The Son is there. The 144,000, it says in Revelation 14, they're standing before the throne and, right, before God, and they're there. The, the Son is there with the 144,000. The Lamb is there with the 144,000, and they're about set to what? Go out and work during the time of trumpets. While the Lord is there as the last Adam on Mount Zion, who's going to fulfill his three and a half years approximately. And in those three and a half years, he will fulfill as he did the three and a half years to save this group in the 4,000th year, will be in the end time thousands as years the exact same place when Satan is cast down and Messiah becomes the sacrificed bull for the atonement of Judah. And he will return two and a half years later as his first death and resurrection was two and a half days. He will now return two and a half years later, feet down on the Mount of olives and in that 14th year the beginning of the final jubilee millennial reign he will destroy all who came against jerusalem 
I'm sorry if anybody is new listening to this. I don't understand how you're still watching. <laughs> I don't think uh, anybody who's still watching uh, is new. But for those that have been watching for a while, I'm sure you're you're catching this now. You're understanding it. You're seeing it. There's some of you that might still be a little confused. Okay. Do you remember what we were saying in the last couple of videos? Is this is the part where some people were were seemingly a little bit confused? How how Christ as the second Adam, if this is Christ's people that he was involved in this creation and the world and all that stuff here with these people, how is he then the representation of Adam as the last Adam? Well, now you know. Now you know. This one was corrupted. So then the father, this was the son's creation here, right? Now all of it is the creation with the, of the son, right? All of it is from, is from Christ that the father gave him permission to do, right? He gave it to him in love to, to want to create in joy. And then what happened is there was a fall, there was a fall, there was a fall. No rescuing for those that fell here, but there's a rescue for these and there's a rescue for these. And so what happened is Christ was involved in this, but they cut him out. They refused that builder. So after the millennial reign or after that, that seventh day or 7,000th year was done, God, the father stepped in and said, I will form my own from the dust of the earth. I believe it, it could have been. That's why, you know, if, if Christ is called the second Adam, then would the first Adam be called a type of Christ? Kind of seems fitting, but we're like, whoa, 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 wait a second. But he fell. He fell to sin and all of that. Well, exactly. I'm not saying he is Christ as we know him as the Savior and everything Christ. I'm saying as the type and shadow, and we know it, because he is called the last Adam. So is it possible as a type in shadow that the first Adam could have been considered like the first Christ? Simply in a type in shadow. Because when he comes at the last Adam, he's coming at the same time. It is the same picture of the thousands into the end time years. So he came, and God forms Adam to bring correction to help save what was happening and what took place in Mark. But because then Satan shows up, he ends up falling corruption to it as well. That's why we say, of course, it's not Christ, but it's that type and shadow as the first and the last. You see? And when Christ comes, what, what are we told by Christ? We're told that his people, we know that Christ is a Jew. He was a Jew who came to save the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the world. So now when this has already been saved, when he came 4,000 years later from Adam, he came in his death and resurrection, brought about the salvation for this group. But this group is still sleeping. There's still a bunch of people sleeping. And so because it's the final stretch, it is the final stretch in all of eternity for this group to come into salvation, there has to be drastic measure taken in his incredible love to get them to wake up and commit to him. But he's already died for them. He's already given them access, you see? So now when he's here, he's like the first Adam, right? The exact same timing in the type and shadow of the thousands to the years in the end, the timing is exactly the same. Why? Well, he's representing the last Adam coming to save his own this time. Not the world that's already been saved. Now, he's coming to save his own. And the year he does it in the type and shadow of the thousands 
is the exact same time frame as the sacrificial bull for the atonement of the house of Judah. Man, I don't know about you guys. This is just absolutely freaky, freaky stuff. Absolutely freaky. I understand this is something that's for people that are newer, newish. This is a heck of a lot to be able to take in. If you really want to and you haven't seen and really studied that book or the or watch that intro series to really to really grasp what I'm sharing with you here, you should really go and do that. Because if you want to understand the power of this revelation, you must first understand the Gospels and the years. There's no way this could have ever come to be without first receiving that understanding, without first seeing it develop and be revealed over the last four years. This is the fractal of the creation's story to the revelation of the end of days and who each gospel is speaking to. The types and shadows, the overall layout and plan and events that took place are a replica. And I understand where people have sometimes an issue is they say, but we're living in like right here right now in this 20,000, 13,000, we're getting really close to the end. There's only what, you know, that about 14 years, 13, 14 years left to go, right? That's true. That's true when you look at it that way. But in the thousands of years, looking at it like this in the thousands from Adam or from the, from in the beginning, the 13 or so years remaining are the actual years remaining in the thousands. <laughs> See how mind-blowing it is? <laughs> All right. Do you see that? I'm trying to think of, of other ways to, to share it and to bring it about. I, I wish I was a, a great artist or I wish I knew how to use programs and, and explain to have these things just diagrammed out for you. But I, I'm, I'm just not that. I can speak these things. I can teach them to the best of my ability. And over the next little bit, it'll get more clear. And uh, like I said, I do plan on the next one uh, to be a live show. And we can discuss these things with more clarity. But hopefully this one thing of, of Adam and if Christ was the representation, now you can understand that better. Because this seventh day was like as the 7,000 years for, for the, those that were on the earth, right? But to the Lord was as a day. And then what? Then there was the thousands that were in and to the Lord there as a day. And this creation, this was, this was really the first Adam as a type of Christ because Christ is going to be the last Adam. And when he's the last Adam, he's now coming to save his own because he's already saved those that he came for originally. Because this group was blinded, they still need that saving. And we've understood that in these teachings that we've been doing here. But to see how the picture of Genesis 1 to Genesis 2 proves it all out and is like a replay in a fractal all the way down to the end, I, 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 my mind is just, it, it's fried. I just, you think about this, guys. Really, really soak it in. Ponder it. Watch it again. Consider these things. Gap. Days. From Adam. It's the same story. It is all about the three groups. And who these three groups are represented for in the creation. Those who have the spirit of the living God in them. Were purposed to have that spirit in them turned on when it turned on, even right up to the last day. 
before the escape, the last moment before the escape. Because this group is the group who was shedding light on the world. It was this group with the spirit of the living God in them as the sons of God, that spirit dwelling in them who are sharing the light of Christ to the world. That now when this light is removed and as we're told, the whole world will witness it, following now this world will begin to recognize what they had missed and been asleep to that in this final push in this final stretch of years to the end of that church age portion at the end of seals it is the reason why it will become the greatest revival in all of human history. They will witness what had taken place and seeing the light vanish. They will be perplexed. They will be in confusion. It will begin the 40 days of the Son of Man as the days of Noah, which is why the confusion. But it will bring about, for the first portion of seals at least, it brings about the greatest revival in human history, and then the greatest fleeing in human history. But most, according to scripture, will be remaining alive to the time of the rapture. Many, of course, will be killed, will be sacrificed, but the majority, it says, will survive alive to the point of the great multitude rapture. At the time of the great multitude rapture, the half hour silence, the seventh seal, when this time comes to an end, the church age salvation period, those from chapter one represented as the days of those who were his creation in the world that he made, is over. It's over. At the escape of the bride of Christ, this group that was predestined, that are the sons of God, that have the spirit of God in them, that, were, that, that are becoming light at the time of the Spirit, when the Lord becomes that light, when he comes at Hanukkah, which is related to his birth, this group is over. There's no more option. There, there are no more of these people who are from that original, you know, not original, but that first creation with the Spirit. There's no more of them. Just like the salvation, this pers- this portion here, this will be the end now of the church age. The final sevens are the final sevens of each original thousands that were laid out from creation. Hence, Judah's time, God's creation portion over the people he made as a people he chose for himself is the final one. And just as we say, Matthew, Mark, and Luke written in Scripture, in the end it is Luke, Mark, and Matthew, and the end is as the beginning, and the beginning is as the end, and what is the beginning? Luke, Mark, Matthew. Brothers and sisters, I am going to leave it there. I don't want to keep talking in circles now. There is this, this is the revelation. This is the culmination of all biblical scriptural evidence that the revelation we have been given of the end of days is now completely proven out in the revelation of the beginning creations. It is all true. It is going to short-circuit your mind as you 
delve into it and as you chew on it and as you really ponder it, as you pray and seek the Lord to give you the revelation of it, to give you the understanding, continue to seek it. Watch the last videos. Watch this one again. If you're really desiring to understand it, I promise you, you will see it. And the next one, as I expect, we'll do a live show. And any questions you have, write some down along the way. Try to figure them out before we get there. But if you still have them at that time, feel free. We'll do a live show probably sometime late Sunday. And um, you guys can uh, bring about your questions then. This is unbelievable. This, this, This is the revelation of everything. And that's why this video is called, It's All a Fractal. I love you, brothers and sisters. God bless you. God bless your families. I am so looking forward to meeting you. We, we are close now. We are so close. This is the month. So hold on tight. Get ready. Keep seeking. Keep drawing closer. And we'll talk to you guys again very soon. I love you all. Bye for now.